Hey guys, welcome to Erin in Copenhagen. On this channel, I'm gonna take you around the city with me and show you everything the guidebooks don't. Today, we are at New Haven, the colorful harbor that's on the front cover of all the guidebooks and pretty much any article about Denmark ever. We're gonna be walking around the whole harbor today and like the title says, I'll be pointing out which one is the haunted house. Let's get going. So, the first thing you'll see is a giant anchor at the top of the harbor, which is a memorial to Danish sailors who lost their lives during World War II. It's a nice little meeting up spot, and there's usually coffee and hot dog stands right next to it if you wanted to grab something before you go. As you make your way down to the water, this is what you'll see. I recommend starting on the left side of the harbor and working your way around. The left side is all the odd number houses and is often referred to as the sunny side by locals. Or I've even heard it called the cheeky side because of all the bars that were historically located here. So it's just a little bit more vibrant and more colorful. The right side is the even number side and is often referred to as the shady side just because, as you might have guessed, it doesn't get that much sun. The houses aren't as colorful or vibrant on this side, but don't skip it all together. Two of the three houses that Danish fairy tale author Hans Christian Andersen lived in is located on this side, and it's actually a better spot to take photos from because you can shoot across the harbor towards all the buildings on the sunny side. All right, we're starting at number one here, which today is an upscale restaurant, but back around the 1900s, this was actually the site of the Scandinavia America Line Company, which, as the name might suggest, was a shipping company that sold transatlantic tickets for passage to America. If you're an American with Danish heritage, it's very, very likely that your ancestors bought their ticket from this building right here. They wouldn't have boarded the ship from here, however, as by this time period, the ships were too big for New Hound, which is actually pretty small. They would have departed from another harbor in a more northern part of the city, which is actually called America Harbor because of the huge swarms of migrants, particularly a lot of Danish Mormons who departed from there to their new beginning in America. Next up, we have what I like to call the Titanic Building, because the White Star Line had offices here on the first floor of this building. They were, of course, the company behind the ill-fated Titanic. Something most people don't know is, if you go up to the first floor windows and squint a little, you can still very faintly see the old White Star Line flag logo and their destinations etched into the window panes. In case you were wondering, 14 tickets to the Titanic were sold to Danes, but sadly only two survived, both of them women. One went on to settle in the US, whereas the other lady immediately returned to Denmark. When she died much, much later as an elderly woman, she was buried in the nightgown she was wearing on the night the ship went down. Now I'm taking you right next door to the infamous Hong Kong building. When I first saw this place, I remember thinking it looked like some kind of Chinese restaurant or something, but it's definitely, definitely not. For at least a hundred years, this place has been a rowdy pub and that's what it remains today. And while it's much calmer today, it does still have a reputation for somewhere you maybe want to avoid as a tourist. Hopping over next door once more, don't miss this inconspicuous little blue building. It's actually the oldest building on New Haven. The founding date at the top of the building, as well as the ironwork decorations, are all made of old anchors that have been smelted together, which I always thought was pretty cool. All right, now we're going over to number 13, which was an old sugar refinery in the 1700s. If you look over the door, you can see a little person holding two cups. These are sugar molds that were used in the refining process. Remember this little statue for later, I'll come back to him. Look at this beautiful green building. Okay guys, this is it. This is the haunted house. This place used to be an inn in the 1700s. The story goes that one night a miller and his girlfriend came to stay at the inn. The innkeeper and the miller got locked into an intense three-day gambling battle, and by the end of it, the miller had lost everything. His horse and cart, his mill, and even his girlfriend. Because, you know, women were just property back then. The miller was convinced the innkeeper had cheated him and ominously vowed to get his revenge. That night, the miller hung himself in the attic. From then on, the residents were terrorized by your standard haunting. Loud noises, ghostly moans, and the sound of a horse-drawn carriage pulling up outside when no one was there. The only time the noises stopped was when the girlfriend herself was in the attic. Once he realized this, the innkeeper forced the girlfriend to stay up in the attic, whereupon she died of fright. Today, as you can see, it's a very fancy restaurant. 
No word on whether the current occupants experience any noticeable hauntings. But I also wanted to point out the golden elephant over the door. If you look around Newhaven, you'll start to notice loads of these little plaques and statues on the buildings. This actually dates from when house numbers weren't really a thing and people would just refer to places as like, oh, you know, the golden elephant building or the sugar refinery. So keep an eye out for these and see if you can guess what the motifs are trying to tell you about the building's origins. Now we come up to number 17. If you look down in the basement, you'll notice a little tattoo shop. This is actually the oldest consistently run tattoo shop in the world. It's been open since around 1911. Danish royalty have even been tattooed here. Here is King Frederick IX pictured in a 1951 issue of Life magazine, chest pumped up, looking like he could kill a man. Newhaven has a strong, very proud maritime history, and this is closely intertwined with the art of tattooing. Just picture mom tattoos with an anchor, swallows, that kind of thing. That style was this shop's bread and butter. Alright, now let's just walk for a little bit. We'll take a break on the history. Oh, I should mention as well that the first part of the harbour before the bridge that cuts through the middle of it, it's basically a ship museum. All the ships in this half are old or otherwise preservation worthy. So if you're into your ships, you're probably really going to enjoy strolling down this bit. After you pass the bridge, they're just regular old ships or ones that have been converted into floating restaurants. This is actually a really good time to show you guys New Hale. Usually this place is packed. This was filmed in April 2021, so of course everything is still shut down because of the pandemic. It offers a really rare opportunity to see the harbour completely stripped back. Usually it's swarming with tourists and the buildings are obscured by parasols and the pavements have tables and chairs spread out all over them. So while it's nice having that liveliness here, it just makes it a little difficult to see all the small details like I've been telling you about so far. Most people just walk down Newhaven without ever really having a deeper context into how it came to be beyond just a harbour with colourful buildings. You'll probably notice this pretty green door as you get towards the end of the harbour. It's the site of an old compass and ship flag maker. Right next door is the first Hans Christian Andersen house, number 67. If you're not familiar with his name, he's the guy behind fairy tales like The Little Mermaid, The Princess and the Pea, The Ugly Duckling, Thumbelina, The Emperor's New Clothes, and so on and so on. Needless to say, he is beloved by Danes and considered a huge national treasure. He lived on the second floor in this house between 1848 to 1865. we get down to the end of the harbour. This is number 71, which is a hotel today. You can see this building looks quite different to the other ones you've seen so far, with all these small little windows and shutters. This is actually a really old warehouse that would have contained goods coming in and out of Denmark, all the way back to the 1700s. A lot of sugar, coffee, spices, and things like that. Now we've reached the end of the harbour and we're greeted with this beautiful view out to the water. To your left is the Royal Theatre, and that's the way you'd walk if you wanted to go see the Little Mermaid statue. I'm planning on doing a video about that actually, so if you're interested, make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell button to be notified when it goes live. To walk on the other side of the harbour, we have to go back on ourselves a little bit, so let's turn around and cross the bridge. Now we're on the other side, and as you can see, the side is definitely shadier. We're quickly coming up to the second and third Hans Christian Andersen houses, the red one and then the yellowy orange one just after that. 
but first let me mention that you have to be extremely careful on this side of the harbour. The other side we just walked is predominantly for pedestrians only, with the exception of one or two employee cars or delivery vans. This side is very much a busy road, particularly in regards to bikes, so please please keep your eyes open, especially outside this next house, as right in front of it is a busy bike lane. Please be careful where you take photos, as Danes on bikes don't mess around. They go fast. Alright, with that out of the way, the first one is number 20, where he lived on the second floor for a brief period in 1834. Then directly next door at number 18, he lived on the first floor from 1871 until his death in 1875, although he didn't die here. He actually died in another house in Copenhagen while he was staying with a friend. So after this, we're kind of coming to the end now. Around this spot is, in my opinion, one of the best places to take photos at Newhaven, particularly if you want to get a group shot or a selfie with some of the most colourful buildings in the background. Otherwise, I think this about concludes my little tour here. It's nice to be able to share this side of Newhaven because there really isn't a lot, or any, tourist information around the harbour. All this stuff I had to find out myself, and honestly, most of the sources were in Danish, so it's not really accessible to the average visitor to Copenhagen, which I think is a real shame. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little glimpse into the city, and if you'd like to see more videos about Copenhagen, please join me by liking, commenting, and subscribing for more stuff. Thanks for coming with me!